So this video is part of a mathematical online course on group theory and this lecture will be on homomorphisms of groups. So we will just recall that a homomorphism um, f from a group G to H is just a map from G to H that preserves multiplication. So f of a b is f of a times f of b. A consequence of this is that f of 1 is equal to 1, where this is the identity of g and this is the identity of h, and f of a to the minus 1 is the inverse of f of a. Um, so you can think of a homomorphism as being a function that preserves the group structure. Um, it's called an isomorphism if f is by a bijection. This means that f is onto and each element of h is the inverse of a unique element of g. This, so in particular, there, there is an inverse function f to the minus 1 from h to g. It's called an automorphism. If it's an isomorphism from g to itself. Um, and finally, the kernel of f is the set of elements um, a with g a equals 1. So um, an isomorphism between two groups, g and h, sort of means that g and h are in some sense the same group. I mean, they're, they're, they're the same group except the elements have been relabeled. So an automorphism of a group can be thought of as a symmetry of the group. So you remember a symmetry is just a bijection from some mathematical object to itself that preserves whatever structure. So these are just symmetries of groups. Um, in particular, a set of all automorphisms of a group is itself a group because it's the set of symmetries of something. So having reviewed those basic definitions, let's just review the standard examples. Um, the first example that most people come across is just the exponential map, um, where x of x is, as usual, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2, and so on. And this has the property, just to focus this, this has the property that x of x plus y is x of x times x of y. And here we have the group operation of uh, the real numbers under addition. And this is the group operation of the group of non-zero real numbers. So, so this means non-zero reals under multiplication. Um, so when I wrote the definition of a homomorphism, I said that f of a, b is f of a, f of b. Um, a, b should sometimes be replaced by the group operation if you're not writing it as multiplication. So here the group operation is written as addition. So we change the definition of homomorphism slightly. Um, so it's not a bijection because it's not on two. There's... Um, um, the, the, the image of X is always positive. However, it is an isomorphism from the real numbers under addition to um, the positive real numbers. So let's call this the positive reals under multiplication. So the positive reals under multiplication form a group. And this is essentially the same as the group of reals under addition because we have this exponential map that is an isomorphism. Um, so here we've got this exponential map. And of course, everybody knows the inverse of the exponential map is called the logarithm um, or ln if you want to use this dreadful notation. Um, so <clears throat> the next example comes from linear algebra. And we recall we have a determinant of a matrix. 
So for a two by two matrix, this is just going to be AD minus BC. And there's a similar formula for larger matrices. And the basic formula is that the determinant of a product of two matrices is the product of their determinants. This means the determinant map is a homomorphism from the general linear group of dimension n over some field, may as well be the real numbers, to the non-zero real numbers. The real numbers can be replaced by any field. So you recall this is the invertible linear maps from Rn to Rn, or at least it can be identified with a group of invertible linear maps. So there's a homomorphism from, from this group onto the non-zero real numbers. It's onto at least if n is greater than one, if, if, if n is greater than or equal to one. If n is zero, then this is just a trivial group and this map isn't onto, which is a stupid special case everybody forgets about. The kernel is called SLN of R, the special linear group, um, which is uh, uh, the special linear group is just defined to be the set of matrices of determinant one. Um, special, by the way, in linear algebra often means determinant one. So the special orthogonal group is the set of orthogonal matrices of determinant one and so on. Uh, so the next example will come from number theory. So we recall that we have this group Z over 4Z, which is the integers modulo 4. So it's got four elements, 0, 1, 2, 3. And the group operation is denoted by addition, and you subtract multiples of 4 whenever you add two things. So, so this is a little, little group of order 4. Um, on the other hand, we have a group z over 5z star. So this is the non-zero integers mod 5 under multiplication. Um, so it's got four elements, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the group operation is given by multiplying them. And if the result is bigger than 5, you reduce modulo 5. So we can recall from any number theory course that these are both groups. And um, these two groups are in fact isomorphic. And you can take an you can have an isomorphism which takes zero to one, one to two, um, two to four, and three to three. So this is going to be the definition of the map F. And the point is that F of A plus B is equal to F of A times F of B. So again, we're changing addition to multiplication. And in fact, F of A is just going to be two to the power of A. So you can see this is two to the one, this is two squared, and this is two cubed, at least if you're working modulo five. Um, so this is a sort of exponential map to um, except where the base is 2 rather than e. Um, one thing people sometimes do with groups is write out a multiplication table. So if you write out the multiplication table of the first group under addition, it looks like this. So th th this means that 2 plus 1 is 3 and so on. And we can write out the multiplication of the second one. It looks like this. Um, so um, we get 2, 4, 1, 3, 3, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 2, 1. And if you look at these, you don't get the second table from the first by, ch by changing 0, 1, 2, and 3 to these numbers here. So um, a common mistake people make when they're starting off with group theory is they, these two multiplication tables um, are not the same if you change 0, 1, 2, 3 to 1, 2, 3, 4. You can see that things go wrong here. So these two groups are not isomorphic. That's a mistake because you can also switch the order of rows of a multiplication table. So if I switch these two rows and these two columns, then the two 
multiplication tables really do become the same if you just relabel these elements according to this rule here. So um, you can't, it's difficult to tell whether or not two groups are isomorphic just by staring at their multiplication tables. Um, in fact, writing out the multiplication table of the group is nearly always a rather stupid thing to do. It gives very little information. And for any group of order larger than about four, it becomes ridiculously tiresome to write out the multiplication table. So my advice for dealing with group multiplication tables is just don't bother with them. They're a lot of work and don't really give you very much useful information. Um, the elements of um, Z modulo 4Z are automorphisms of um, Z modulo 5Z. Here we are identifying Z modulo 4Z with Z modulo 5Z, um, the, the non-zero elements of this. Um, for example, if you take um, an element of z modulo 5z and map it to 2 times g. This is an automorphism of z modulo 5z. The reason being that it has an inverse g goes to 3g because 2 times 3g is 6g, which is equal to g in z modulo 5z. Um, so this gives several examples of automorphisms of groups. Another example of a homomorphism is um, the a map from the reals to the circle group. So the circle group S1, its elements are just the elements of the unit circle. So they're pairs x, y with x squared plus y squared equals 1. And if you fix a point, you can think of an element of this group as corresponding to a rotation of the plane by this angle. So that the points of the circle correspond to possible rotations of the plane fixing the origin. And the group multiplication is easy enough to work out. If you've got two points x1, y1, and x2, y2 on the circle, then the product is going to be x1, x2 minus y1, y2, x1, y2 plus x2, y1. You can see this in two ways. You can either think of x, y as being the point cosine theta, sine theta, and then um, if x1, y1 is cosine theta 1, sine theta 1, then this becomes cosine theta 1, cosine theta 2, minus sine theta 1, sine theta 2, which is the usual formula for cosine theta 1 plus theta 2. And similarly, this becomes sine of theta 1 plus theta 2, which I'm not going to write out explicitly. So um, we have um, a nice group operation on these numbers here. And there's a homomorphism from the real numbers to S1, which just takes a point um, theta of R to cosine theta, sine of theta. And um, we've, um, the um, group operation that we've defined here just makes this into a homomorphism by the formula for cosine and sine of, a, of an angle. So um, if we call this f, then f of theta 1 plus theta 2 is equal to f of theta 1, f of theta 2, where this is the product given above. Um, next, we can ask, what is the kernel of this homomorphism? Well, the kernel consists of all real numbers theta such that cosine of theta equals 1 and sine of theta equals naught. So it's just multiples of 2 pi. That's integer multiples of 2 pi. Um, for a final example of a homomorphism, 
Um, let's look at a slightly less obvious one. What we're going to do is to take the group of rotations of an octahedron. So let's take a rotations of an octahedron, which has order 24, meaning it's got 24 elements in it. And we're going to have a, a homomorphism from this to the group S3, which is permutations of three points. And this is order six. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to take three objects. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the three diagonals of an octahedron. So you see it's got one diagonal between my finger and thumb here, and it's got another diagonal here, and a third diagonal here and here. So these three points are going to be the three diagonals. And any rotation of the octahedron will just permute these three diagonals. So this homomorphism is in some sense trivial. Um, any rotation of an octahedron automatically gives us a permutation of the three diagonals. And if you think about this for a few seconds, you see this is just a homomorphism. Um, and what's the kernel of this homomorphism? Um, well, this group here is order six, and this group is order 24. So the, um, there are definitely some elements of this mapping to the same element of this. And we'll see fairly shortly that the kernel of a, um, one group mapping onto another has ordered the quotient of this number by that number. So the kernel should have four elements. And we can see these four elements. Here's one of them. I picked this diagonal. And I just wrote by 180 degrees about this diagonal. You can see it maps each diagonal to the, to, to the same diagonal. And there are three ways of doing this because there are three diagonal. So the kernel is the three rotations by 180 degrees about the diagonal plus the trivial um, symmetry where you do absolutely nothing to the octahedron. Um, so that's enough examples of homomorphisms. Uh, the next few lectures, what we're going to do is describe the small finite groups in order of size, making a sort of rather forlorn attempt to classify all finite groups. And and what we'll do is we'll introduce lots of theorems about finite groups whenever we need them to classify finite groups of some order.